ladies and gentlemen, boys and hot, uh, welcome to the, girls, welcome to this to episode 139 of the Spear Sunnies podcast, I think that's what we're up to, but who's counting, fucking, I'm trying, <laughs> and, and uh, everyone else is counting, but uh, I don't know, you would think that after 170,000 episodes or however many I've done, I would get it right, but uh, hey man, I haven't, I'm uh, recording this one on a lovely Friday afternoon, which means all of the Patreon cunts will be listening to it on a Saturday, which is pretty amazing, uh, and everybody else will be listening to it on time, which is, let's be honest, even more amazing. <laughs> I'm in a good mood, guys. Uh, been, I had a, dude, dude, I've had the most, the, the most productive week, right? Recovered from the flood in the warehouse, cleaned everything up, put all of the fucking t-shirts and the merch back where it goes, I only had to throw out a few t-shirts, everything else is good to fucking go, loosebeers.com slash merch if you want your t-shirts, uh, and dude, I have, me and Keelan, the editor, have been, uh, hustling, dude, we've been working in here every day, or I have, he's in twice a week, I've been in here every fucking day, uh, and then I've been out every night, gigging, doing stand-up, working on new gear, and... At the moment, you will never guess how organized I am. We are fucking currently booking in the tour for 2019 now. (laughs) What level of fucking organized is this? I've never experienced it before. To give you a a little bit of perspective, I think we booked the independent variable tour, this year's tour, about about a, a month or two before it went on sale, which is not how you're supposed to do it. That was terrifying. Now, we've decided on all the venues, we've decided on all the cities, and... You know what? If you want me to come to your city, you better fucking speak up now because we are locking it in, man. We are locking it in. Uh, New Zealand is definitely happening. Man, I gotta, I'm, 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 I'm really bummed we did not do New Zealand this year and it's not going to happen this year. <clears throat> and uh, I can't remember if I've said why, uh, but I'm going to say why. I don't know. Sorry if I already said this. New Zealand, for me, uh, has been such a bitch to book ever since my first tour, Uh, because the first tour, one of the venues closed down, one of the cities I never should have done, because I found out that it was a tourist town that no locals live in, I literally, literally had two New Zealanders show up to the show, (laughs) and the rest of them were fucking English backpackers that had no idea who I was, and they were like, comedy? (laughs) Why is that here? Why is that happening? I just want to get pissed and fuck someone as hot as me. Cunt. But th- that show was actually pretty fun. Um, so anyway, we, we we started booking it in to do it as part of the IV tour this year. And we reach out to all of the venues. We find out one's closed. We didn't want to do the tourist town one, but we reach out to the other two. One of them uh, closed. The other one had no dates. And then uh, Auckland, the venue that I did last year, which by the way, I completely sold out, put on an incredible show. And it was the best one we did in New Zealand. We reached out to them and we're like, Hey, we would like to come back. It's Lewis again. He'll, uh, he's even bigger this year. So he'll sell it out. We might even be able to do, to do two. And uh, we get an email back and he goes, Oh, sorry, it didn't work out last time. We won't have him back. And we were like, what do you mean? It didn't work out last time. we I couldn't work out what didn't work. Like, we went there, the venue wasn't vandalized, the, it was sold out, people bought drinks, and, and then I remember, <laughs> I remember that uh, some of the staff working at that New Zealand venue were so offended by my show that I think they've held on to it for an entire year, And then when we tried to book it again, even though we sold out the show, they've gone, nah, fuck that cunt and his heinously offensive jokes. We're not having him back. And look, man, hey, harden the fuck up, right? Actually, you know what? We did piss off that staff because we know there was one, there was, I remember, there was one bartender in particular, a girl, and uh, I, I could see the bar from the stage and I was telling my jokes and I could see 
her face and I was killing, right? I was doing really well at that show, but she hated every single word that came out of my mouth. She hated all of it, right? And her face was the most sour looking, angry face I've ever seen in one of my crowds. And I've made a lot of people mad. (laughs) And after the show, the camera guy that I took with me also noticed how angry and upset she was at my material. And because everyone who works with me is a shit stirrer, he decides we finish the show, right? We pack up, we get out, I take photos with everyone, we start packing up, we start to leave. And right before we leave, my camera guy goes, all right, all right, let's get a group photo with all of the people and uh, that were part of the show and all of the bartenders. <laughs> And it was just to piss off this woman even more, right? And you have to see the photos. I'll try and track them down. Uh, They'll be somewhere. I'll see. I might be able to find it. I don't know where they are, right? But this photo, we get in a photo and it's like maybe my whole team of three people and then their team of four people bar stuff and, and everyone except for her is smiling and her face. She, I've never seen anyone looks so angry, upset, and disappointed in themselves for agreeing to take a photo with a comedian that they had just been fucking so offended by. She literally stared at the camera like, like, have you ever seen a, have you ever seen a toddler when you, when, when they don't want to do something and they just sit there with their, they stand there with their arms crossed and they just go, like, that's the face that she made. And then, uh, Because that wasn't enough, right? I immediately picked up on what my camera guy was doing and I saw how angry she was to be in the photo. We took one photo and then I was like, all right, one more, one more, let's do one more. And then just just to piss her off even more, we just did one more photo and she looked even angrier in the second photo and then we finished it and she started to immediately walk away and then I was like, well, fuck it. I came all the way to New Zealand. I might as well try and ruin this girl's entire month instead of just her week, right? So I was like, all right, that's a good photo out of the way. Let's do a silly one. (laughs) And then we got it back in the fucking photo and everyone else is making faces, doing silly hand motions. And she's still like the five-year-old toddler who got told she couldn't have ice cream for breakfast. Yeah, I don't like jokes. They're offensive. And bro... Let me tell you something, it wasn't worth it, because now I can't perform at that venue anymore. <laughs> so, that's that's why New Zealand um, didn't happen this year, but we've, all, we're all, we've already found other venues that will be part of the next year's tour, which will be like, I don't know, September, October, same time next year. Um, so, the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it'll all happen. So, man... I've had, like I said, I was like I was saying, the most productive week ever, dude. Uh, Lou Review comes back fucking Tuesday, uh, and I'm bringing it back with a two-parter, right? Part one, I'll just say it, I'm Lou Reviewing Supreme Patty, the Instagram influencer. Part one, initially it was only supposed to be one video. Part one, well, it was not supposed to be part one, it was just supposed to be one video. I was going to cover how shit his content is, and then also the free chains, watches, and accessories scam that he's currently running to trick his fans into thinking they're getting free shit, when in reality, it's a like multi-layered scam, a drop shipping thing. People are getting ripped off left, right, and center. But this scam was so fucking deep and involved so many different other influences and people and layers, and I did so much research on it that I was like, fuck it, everyone keeps asking me to do more in-depth analytical lure reviews like the Nimble one that I did a few years ago, I was like, I'll just split this into two parts. Part one covers how shit Supreme Patty is and all the stuff that he makes and how horrible it is. Part two covers his fucking bullshit scam that involves many different other uh, influences. And uh, I'm excited for both of those to drop. I'm coming back in a big way. And uh, you know what? It doesn't stop from here. I feel so good. I feel like I've, I know I've been saying this heaps, but I have nothing to do other than this, right? So I'm just going to smash videos, smash the podcast, perform as much as possible, get as good as possible, write the next show. That's all I got to do. The tour is being booked in right now. I have nothing to do, man. It's done. My, next year is done. I just got to fucking put videos out and perform. That's it. Going back to basics, man. It's like my first two years of comedy. 
before I was like, I can do a comedy special without a producer. <laughs> I'm going to do a movie with no director. Fucking idiot. But uh, the spe- oh, thank fuck the special turned out well, man, because I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I can do a, a tour and a comedy special and a radio show at the same time. That'll be easy, man. That won't make me go have a fucking mental breakdown. Good on you, dickhead. Um, so yeah, man, those uh, those two videos are going to come out Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, the, two, the final tour vlog came out Friday, which is tonight or a couple days ago if you're not a Patreon cunt. And uh, yeah, that's cool. The, um, the, the final tour vlog was edited by Keelan. The other ones were done by uh, the camera person we took on tour. And Keelan did the last one, who's my regular editor now. And uh, really happy with how, how that came out. So uh, I'm excited to stop releasing them. Uh, move on from that project and just smash Lure reviews and stuff. And I, yeah, I really think that it's not going to stop from here, man. Uh, also, if you don't know, we've been uh, uploading pretty much four videos a week to the Podcast Clips channel. So check out Lewis Spears Podcast Clips. Uh, check that out on YouTube. There's four videos a, a week pretty much dropping on there. Just chopped up best bits of, of episodes and shit like that. And I'm trying to put out one on Instagram and Facebook as well, as well as uh, one video a week for the main channel. Maybe two if I can handle the workload, uh, but I don't want to promise shit that I can't do. So I feel really good, man. Thanks to Patreon and, and, and all you cunts coming to the show. We got a little bit of a budget. And uh, I'm just putting it straight back into the hole. You know me. I could, I could, uh, I could uh, move out. Nah, man. I'm just gonna pay rent for a warehouse and pay someone else's wage. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. And uh, it's working out really, really well, man. Uh, it's put me in a great space to just fucking write and film instead of sitting there for eight hours editing something when I really want to be moving on to the next thing. So. It's good, man. It's fucking... I'm in a good space. I'm very happy at the moment. And, dude, I think I'm the fittest also. I've been... In the last six months, I've been going to gym five days a week. Bro, five days a week. You don't understand how fucking fit I'm getting. I had so I went to a... Com- I, I did a comedy spot. I did a Gorilla, uh, which is like this little underground shisha bar looks like a fucking dungeon there's only like 30 people that can fit in there they're all on bean bags it's great my head pretty much touches the roof love that place i did gorilla talking with all these other comedians afterwards this guy who i hadn't seen for a few months because i've been on tour he go <laughs> he goes hey man your uh your neck looks really muscular <laughs> my neck Like, dude, I've been doing shoulder day. I've been doing chest day. I've been doing leg day. Do you know I'm deadlifting 80 kilos now? I'm trying to deadlift 100 kilos in the next couple of months. I have never, not even once in my entire, not even when I was a personal trainer, when I was fit as fuck, not even then did I ever do neck day. (laughs) <laughs> man, your neck looks really muscular. Thanks, dude. What a fucking obscure compliment. You could have said anything else. You know what? You know what would have been better than that? Not saying anything. Your neck looks really muscular. And you know what, man? I had a look in the mirror and he's fucking correct. The biggest gains I've noticed, not on my shoulders, not on my biceps, not even on my triceps, which are looking very good at the moment. It's my fucking neck. Neck gains. That's what I got. You don't understand. Like you like all of these fucking porn stars better watch out because I've got, I've got the real neck game here. If I ever, if I ever decide to stick, actually, you know what? I probably couldn't, I probably couldn't suck dick, man. I didn't, I ended up just snapping them off with my, with my neck with a six pack. My six pack neck. (laughs) The six pack neck. My neck has a six pack. Thanks, man. Feel really good about myself. But you know what? Just talking, I've realized that from doing deadlifts, and shit, you know when you go to the gym, and you go, and if you lift something really heavy, you go, and and you, you, you like, your face strains, and, and you stick your jaw out, and you go, 
and you make that face that you only ever make when you're going to the gym or you're coming or you're doing like a real big poo. Like the like that one. You know, the the fucking I need to poo, but every time I sit down on the toilet, nothing happens face. That like, uh, and then after three days of that, you sit down on the toilet and you go, you know what, bowels, today's the fucking day. I am not getting off this seat until I am two kilos lighter. <laughs> and you just go, that face. That's some, um, I'm talking about that wonder white bread for breakfast face. You know, that shitty white bread poo face. That's what I'm talking about. When I fucking deadlift... I look like I've just been chowing down on foam and then I had to shit it out. That's what I look like. And because I'm like straining my my face and my jaw muscles so much, I've started to get like just under my chin, I feel like like DOMS, like delayed onset muscle soreness in my neck. Not from me doing neck exercises, just from me going, making the face. And straining my face that hard. I've started to be like, man, my face is really beefing up, bro. Getting a real beefy neck. Fuck. It's like that long neck cunt on Instagram. You seen this, that fucking toothpick looking dude? You think, you think I'm skinny? Check out long neck on Instagram, bro. That guy looks like, that, he, that dude must have some kind of disorder or disability. And he's turned himself into a viral Instagram star just from taking his shirt off and having a, a horrendously thin body. Dude looks like... <laughs> Dude looks like a fucking pencil. It's like someone f- someone fused a pencil in a mop and then put it on Instagram. Like, you think that guy has a long neck, right? That guy's name is Long Neck. Me? I'm fucking strong neck. (laughs) I'm fucking strong neck. That's my porn star name, dude. Strong neck. Man. You know what else I've been doing, though? Because I've been going to the gym, right? I've been eating properly. I'm on this new diet. I wrote myself a diet. Because what's funny about being a personal trainer is that health and fitness knowledge is always just there and I can whip it out. And I'm fully aware of, of sometimes how unhealthy a lifestyle I live. Not because I eat shit, but because I just don't eat. Like sometimes I have a, honestly, I have a really bad habit. It happens to me at least once a week where I will forget to eat. Like not, ju- not just like I can't be bothered making food or I don't feel hung. I guess I, yeah, I don't, I, I forget to feel hungry. My body's just like, oh, we're, we're writing jokes. We're filming this. We're editing that. We're doing this. And then I've, I, I get so obsessed with the fucking comedy. I don't know if it's ADD or something. I get so obsessed with, with the comedy that I'm doing that I just don't eat. And then I come out of that six hour fast and then I have to do something else. And then my body starts shutting down. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why do I feel... Oh, yeah, I haven't eaten food at all. <clears throat> so I'm on this new diet, right? Where I'm, I'm just making myself eat food. It's like something stupid, like three, 4,000 calories, right? I'm going ham. Except there's no ham in the diet. <laughs> That's not how you get a strong neck, all right? You want a strong neck, no ham. Um... A bit of beef now, if you know what I mean. That's what you're looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <coughs> I'm not sucking dick to get abs in my neck. Um, fuck, man. I need my so I need, I need my inhaler, and then I'm gonna run you through my diet. Jeez, this is a fucking interesting podcast, isn't it? I'll be back in a second. Gonna find my fucking. try and do this last episode and I couldn't find it. I feel like maybe this maybe this time I'll I have better luck, right? So I'm checking in my fucking bag. Nah, don't have it there. Where are they? I feel like I definitely had them. What's that? That's not it. Well, you know what? Dude, I am going to die! It's actually not a good thing for me to be walking around having no idea where my inhaler 
is. Because uh, it's, a, it's the kind of thing where if you have a, <laughs> a fucking asthma attack because you're screaming about your neck having a six pack, I'm pretty sure it's not good for your health. Oh, I'm just going to pause it and I'll come back. This is not funny anymore. One second. It was in my bag the whole time. I found that shit. Now I'm really hot. So I made myself angry. Looking for my inhaler when it was in my bag the whole time. My podcast is the worst fucking podcast in the country. Okay, um, what was I talking? Oh yeah, my fucking diet, right? So, I've been, um, oh, man, I've been, I think I'm confusing the fuck out of my body, man. Because on this diet, that's like... Yo, dude, you gotta get your protein, you gotta get your carbs, you gotta get your uh, fucking uh, macros, your micros, your fucking... Hey, fuck all that shit. Just eat as much food as you can. If you're a fat cunt, eat as less as little food as you can without being an anorexic, right? Just eat more, move more, eat less, move more. That's it, right? Fuck all the fucking science, just look at your calories, look at your protein, that's it, right? Oh, I need fucking omega-3s. Hey, man, no, you don't. You need to get on the treadmill, you fat fuck. That's what you need. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what you need. Oh, I can't afford... All these people are like, oh, I can't afford to live a healthy life. Supplements are so expensive. Hey, dude, you know what you can afford to do? Stop going to Krispy Kreme at 3 a.m. when you're pissed off your face. Maybe then you won't be clinically obese, you sweaty piece of shit. Or if you're fucking, if you're a skinny cunt, hey man, pick up some, pick up anything and then put it back down again, rinse and repeat, eat some pasta and stop being such a fucking twig, dude. I'm, I'm trying to be the fucking biggest cunt I can. I'm not trying to be big. I just want to be not, I think I'll always be skinny, but I don't want to be like, oh, is he alright? <laughs> like that's, I don't want, I, I want like, oh, he's tall. I don't want, oh, he looks unwell. Oh, did he just escape from the fucking Holocaust Museum? That's what, I don't want that shit, right? I, I'm, but I'm confusing my body with this diet, man. Like what I'll do is I'll go to gym and I'll, I'll smash it. If I'm there, I'm there. I get up at 6am every fucking day and then I go to the gym and that's it. And I've been struggling to wake up. Actually, I've been struggling to wake up, but I fixed the problem. So, the man, the f- your, the mobile phone is just the the enemy of all things productive. The moment you look at that fucking glowing box of content and endorphins, your day is over. Whatever you are going to do is not getting done even if sometimes i will i will i will think oh i need to send this person an email and i will open my phone it will unlock and i forget why i'm looking at it all of a sudden 30 minutes have gone by the only thing i've watched are like kittens rolling around on the carpet and instagram models shaking their asses and i'm like what the fuck did i mean to come on here for oh yeah an email and then i'll open up my emails and then there'll be a fucking advertisement from Games Workshop advertising new plastic toy soldiers and I'll be like oh fuck I I do want to check out the new sculpts for Blackstone Fortress I'll open up that email next thing you know I've clicked on their YouTube channel because they have a little trailer for it I'm watching that then I see something in the recommended I'm like oh yeah another Instagram model but this time she's shaking her tits I'll watch that and now I'm watching this I got half a chub and I'm like what the fuck was I supposed to do oh yeah email by the time I actually send the fuck an email it's been three hours it's past 5 p.m i'm not gonna get a response until tomorrow at 9 a.m and then the whole cycle starts again the phone is the enemy of productivity bro i've started i don't i don't look at it anymore i'm done man i'm trying to only ever look at it if i'm doing something for for me 
to show to you guys. So I'm being that. Uh, what I'm do, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm saying that the phone for me is the enemy of productivity. And if you want to be a successful person, don't look at your phone because there's only bullshit on there. But what I'm also doing is saying, hey guys, you should look at your phone because I post bullshit on this. So <laughs> fuck your life. Help me with mine. I don't know, man. I feel like you you need to um. What's good? I mean, what would be good if you if YouTube, when you subscribe, told you when you fucking uploaded a video, you could then, I don't know, I feel like what I'm trying to do is in the morning, I don't look at it because the morning is the biggest killer, especially when you're waking up at 6 a.m., which even when you're in a routine, let's be honest, it's not the, it's not the night. It's awesome when you're up, but getting out of bed is a fucking bitch. And what I used to do is set an alarm for 6 a.m. on my phone. And then the alarm would go off. I'd pick up my phone, turn off the alarm, game over. I'm looking at my phone. And sometimes I would no shit sit there in bed scrolling until fucking 11. Five hours of scrolling. Doing nothing. Fuck all, right? So what I've started to do now is... uh, I don't set the alarm on my phone. What I did is I bought this thing. This is not an ad. This thing has fucking changed my life. I made my girlfriend get one and she started getting up and she was even worse than me because I'm a morning person. I love getting up early. Um, she doesn't. She's one of those fucking night owls, right? We hate each other. I want to sleep. She's awake. I want to get up. She's asleep. It's fucked. Um, it's, it's called a ruggy alarm clock, like ruggy, R-U-G-G-I-E. And what it is, is it's like, it's like a pressure sensor. It's a soft mat with a, a, with a fucking clock in it. And you set the alarm for whatever time, 6 a.m. for me. And at 6 a.m., I, you get this rug, right? And you put it on, away from your bed, in your room, on the floor. It's like a doormat. And then you set the alarm for 6 a.m. And then it goes off. It starts playing waves rolling across. And it doesn't matter how relaxing the idea of waves gently rolling across the beach may sound when you set the alarm. When you are awoken to fucking waves when I'm not at the beach in your bedroom, you hate them, right? And anyway, so it goes. And then I wake up and then I'm like, I... It's 6 a.m. I hate that fucking noise. I got to turn the alarm off. And the only way you can turn the alarm off is by getting out of bed, walking over to the mat and standing on it for a minimum of 10 seconds. And then I stand there and it's like one, two, whoosh, whoosh. And I get three seconds in. I'm like, I want to go to bed. I'm fucking tired. Why am I getting up this early? Five, six. Oh, I mean, I guess the waves are pretty good. Seven, eight. No, I'm kind of waking up. The waves are kind of nice. Nine, ten. All right, I'm up. Let's fucking get them, right? And then I go straight to the bathroom. And and even then, sometimes when I get out of bed, you know when, you're out, when you get up early and you just, you're like half awake. And you feel like a zombie and you're like, oh, what's what's wrong with me? I got enough sleep. I, I slept at the normal time. This should be fine. Why am I so tired? What I've started doing is I'll just like, oh, I see this in movies and TV shows all the time. I guess I'll just try it, right? I went straight to my bathroom, turned on the tap, splashed water on my face. Boom. I'm fucking awake. Cold water on the face snapped me straight out of that fucking half awake stupor that I was in. And I was like, oh, dude, this is the best. Like a fucking, literally like a fucking magic trick. Zero to a hundred, sleepy to awake. Fuck. And I've started doing that every morning. I set the ruggy, I get up, I stand on it for 10 seconds. I go down to the bathroom, wet my face. I'm fucking on. And I haven't even looked at my phone. So I don't touch my phone in the morning. I'm already down in the bathroom. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm up, I'm awake. I'll make myself breakfast. I have a fucking magazine on the on the breakfast table. And then I sit down with my fucking porridge and a tea with creatine in it. A nice little supplement. Love a bit of creatine. And then I open up the magazine and I eat my fucking gruel. And I flick through the magazine and I drink my tea. And then I go, well, I've had a gym supplement, creatine. It's going to make me fucking pumped up. Time to just go, otherwise I'm going to be really pumped up sitting at fucking home, doing nothing, and then getting really dehydrated for no reason. So I'm like, alright, 
Then I go to gym. And you know what? I'm finished with gym at like 7.30, sometimes 8. And then I'm, and then I come home and I have second breakfast and I'm fucking ready to go. I go straight to the warehouse. I get here at like 8.30, 9. And I'm on. I've already gone to the gym. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm awake. I'm doing shit. Time to work. And I just start riding. And it's the best, man. I've started getting fit, started putting on weight again. I started getting a real, a really muscular neck. <laughs> really muscular neck. That's the only compliment I've been getting. And I've been working at the gym, waiting for the natural, because that's the best compliment, right? As my girlfriend commented when I had my shirt off, oh, you look bigger. That doesn't count. She sees me every day, right? It's when a fucking stranger says something when you have clothes on. That's that's when you've actually changed. Whether you're losing weight or whether you're putting it on, that's when when someone who's not a close friend who doesn't see you every day goes, have you started going to the gym? Oh, you look different. You look good. That, that when you're wearing clothes, is the best. And that moment, I was so excited because he went, have you been going to gym? And then I was like, hey, as a matter of fact, yeah. And then he went, because your neck looks really muscular. You ruined it. My neck looks muscular. Fuck off. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I've been confusing my body. This is what I've been doing to my body at like, I get home. Sometimes I'll get home at 11 p.m. after a stand-up show. So I'll be, I wake up at 6 a.m., I get home at 11 p.m., I have enough time to eat something, watch a comedy special on Netflix or read my book, and then fucking pass out, die, wake up to the to the ruggy, go like, ah, stand on it, wet my face, start again. So I get home at 11 p.m. most nights this week after comedy shows, gigs, right, working on new gear, and, and I've started eating. I'm confusing the fuck out. I can feel how confused my body is. What I do is I eat four sushi rolls, real healthy, four sushi rolls that I got from the sushi joint chucked in the fridge for later because I know I'm not going to fucking heat anything up. I'm not going to cook anything when I get home at 11 p.m. So that's what I do. Instead of buying lunch, I buy sushi at lunchtime and then I have my pre-cooked shit and then I eat that sushi at night. And I eat four sushi rolls and then I have half a liter of milk with a protein mass gain shake, which is like a thousand calories. So that there is like almost 2000 calories. And then, so my body's like, fuck yeah, sushi. I feel good. I'm drowning in milk and powder. And then I have four cookies and my body just goes, what the fuck do you want me to do with this? How do I, what did you... Four cookies, that's not healthy, but you gave me four suits, that's pretty good, but it's a lot of chicken, but a, a half a liter of milk, why? Powder, Then you know that powder is just kind of powdered milk with protein in it, what do I do? And then I wake up in the morning, and I do, I do like, I do like the, the godfather of shits. Like I wake up and I just like, I just lay down a, like a giant... A giant fucking log. And my body is like, you made us do this. And then I wake up every morning and I go, and then I go to the gym and I go, and then I get to a comedy night. Someone goes, man, you've got a, you've got a real muscular neck. Have you been working out? And I go, no, no, no. I've just been eating four sushi rolls, four cookies, half a liter of milk and a protein shake, and then shitting it out in the morning. That's my neck workout. First of all, it's like swallowing all of it. Then it's like straining it out in the morning. (laughs) That's what I've been doing, man. How long are we going for here? Oh, we're going for fucking not too long. That's good. I'm going to stop talking about eating and shitting. Um, man, have you guys seen... Um, have you seen this? It's like this product that's been like going viral on Facebook um, and like marketing and ads and all that kind of bullshit and videos have been going viral. Have you guys seen that Donald Trump um, toilet brush, it's like a, it's kind of funny, I guess, it's like, it's a toilet brush, and he's, the face is Donald Trump, and then the bristles are like wild orange hair, and then the, the handle is like an American flag, and obviously, people are like, oh, I hate the president, I'm gonna buy a Donald Trump toilet brush, and every time I see that, I think, like, is that, is he getting a kickback? Like, does he get paid for that? 
because it, it's it's his face, it's his likeness, and it says Donald Trump toilet brush on the box, and then all these people who hate him are buying it. But like, is he is he getting money from from that? Because I mean, if, if someone started making Lewis Spears action figures, and I wasn't getting paid, I could I could sue them. So is is Donald Trump making money out of fucking idiots who hate him so much they buy a toilet brush of him? Or is it like an illegal thing? Or or can you make... I've seen so much merchandise of... I mean, I have a Donald Trump pop vinyl figure. Like, did he make money out of that? Or, or is like making merchandise out of presidents free game? That doesn't seem like it would be a legal thing to do. Because otherwise you could like sell Donald Trump swastika t-shirts and it'd be fine, like legal. I don't know, like, I, I just think, I think that's a really funny idea. If people hating Donald Trump so much that they're buying toilet brushes of him, are they just inadvertently filling his fucking bank account? I think that's so funny. I need to find that out. Um, does Donald, what do you even Google? Um, can you make merchandise of the president uh, uh nah what it's like to sell political merchandise for a living um in red states bill wyatt sells t-shirts that say drain the swamp <clears throat> in blue states they say fuck trump oh that's so smart what a fucking businessman. Some guy who has has just no stake in the fucking game, doesn't care either way, is just like, hey man, I don't care who wins as long as I make money. He sells pro-Donald Trump merch in Texas and anti-Donald Trump merch in LA. And it's the same guy making bank. What a fucking legend. On the morning after Donald Trump was elected president of the United States, Bill Wyatt sat in his car in North Carolina with cardboard boxes carrying hundreds of t-shirts he could no longer sell. History made red one with a screen printed graphic of Hillary Clinton raising her arms in celebration. President Nazi, Nasty Woman, Nazi Woman, <laughs> President Nasty Woman read the other. Um, he's a long-term political merchandiser. Wow. That's so funny, man. What a fucking genius. This dude, I'm just reading this article. I can't believe I'm enjoying a Vice article. <clears throat> he's just he's just making fucking bank out of selling t-shirts to both sides. That's crazy. So, so this guy is obviously selling Hillary Clinton merchandise and she has no idea that he's doing it and it doesn't say anything about it being illegal. Wyatt said he sold about 2,000 t-shirts while traveling to Sanders political, Bernie Sanders political rallies around the country early this year, but after he lost the Democratic nomination, sales slumped, and he fell into a post-Bernie depression because he wasn't making money. Man, 2,000 t-shirts, that's like fucking, that's like 40, 60 grand, depending on how much you're selling them for. What was that in like, in a couple of weeks, he said. Fuck, that's crazy. I'm trying to work out if it's, if it's illegal. On the West Coast, he's going to sell t-shirts that read fuck Trump because there's no better way to illustrate the star starkly divided blah 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 fucking vice bullshit. Um, it's not easy out there and that's the reason. I don't know. Well, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Good on him. I like that. I guess, I guess maybe, maybe it's not legal, but it's not worth like punishing people for doing it. I don't know. I think that's so smart. Just selling political merchandise and you just like, just for both sides, like, wait, hey man, whatever you think, <laughs> like that's, that's what the business is. Like, hey, welcome to whatever the fuck you think. We sell uh, opinions that you already agree with so you can chuck them on your chest and push them on other people who will never side with you because you're the type of cunt who wears their core beliefs on a fucking t-shirt. Good on ya. What do you sell? I don't know. What do you think? Literally, what do you, th what, what you think? That's what we sell. 
Oh, I think President Trump should go to jail. Yeah, all right. Chuck that on a t-shirt. That'll be 20 bucks. Oh, I reckon Hillary should go to jail. Yeah, no worries, mate. Chuck it on a hoodie. 50 bucks. <laughs> Whatever you think. Dot com. It's my new business, man. Dude. I had the, the worst, the worst experience at my favorite burger joint the other day. I went to, I went to 8-Bit in the city. What do you want? You fucking pe- Oh my God. Fucking, my computer has, for some reason, they're like, oh, let's put a fucking touch screen in the keyboard, and then we're going to have a, on that touch screen, we're going to have a button that if you press it, Siri goes, hey, I'm Siri, what would you like? Hey, nothing! There's never in my life been a fucking moment where I've gone, hey, Siri, I've got a question for you. I don't have a question for... Oh, now it's fucking going off. Why did I even say it? That's the thing. You can't even talk about it because she goes, I'm listening. <laughs> I heard that. Fucking bitch. Shut up. Hey, Siri, you're a fucking bitch. You know what? If I don't sound like me, like if I go, hey, Siri. <clears throat> See? She heard that, right? Fuck off. But if I go, hey, Siri. Oh, shit. I don't know. She knows when I'm doing a dumb voice. What? A hey, Siri. Nah, I've got it. Hey, Siri, you're a fucking mole. Oh, now my phone's going off, dude. That's the thing. Now my fucking laptop and my phone, if, if ever I want to actually say... Sometimes Siri is only ever good for setting reminders. Like, hey, Siri, remind me to call this cunt at 7 p.m. Like, that's great. I love doing that. And now it's fucking doing it. Stop it. All right? I was using it as an example. I don't want to set it. But now, if I do that, because my fucking laptop and my phone both have it, both of them go off and they go, yes, yes, okay, we can do that. And then I get two reminders. Hey, man, cool. Love that. Good feature. But you know what, guys? As much as, much as I complain about Apple, at least I don't have a fucking wild way. <laughs> At least I don't look like a Roblox character every time I'm trying to take a selfie, okay? All right? And every time I complain about Apple, Android cunts go, that's why you should have got it. No, man, okay? I can still complain about a product that is infinitely superior than your fucking piece of shit individual phone that doesn't work properly, okay? All right? Get your stylus. Take it out of your fucking... Put your stylus back in your phone, all right? Every time I, every time I complain about Apple... All these fucking Samsung dorks get their stylus out. They start tapping away. Oh, Betty fucking... You should have got a fucking Samsung Galaxy Note. So when you get... Dude, you know... Do you understand? Every time I get on a plane... <clears throat> every time I get on a plane, they go... Uh, if you have uh, uh, any baggage that's not secured, please secure it. Uh, make sure you do up your seatbelt. And if you have a uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 2, please let the uh, air hostess know because we have to remove it and you from the plane because they explode. So, hey, man, next time, next time, next time you ever catch me complaining about Apple, just remember that the biggest Android manufacturer in the world accidentally made a bomb <laughs> and uh, called it a phone. So, hey, man, checkmate. You fucking got me. Oh, but I don't have a Samsung. I have a different one. Okay, cool. Chuck your Google Pixel 3 and shove it in your ass. I would rather use Bing than have a Pixel. <clears throat> man... Worst experience ever at this fucking burger joint. I go to this burger joint and I went again after a gig. Because I've been gigging, man. I've been doing like, I did this week, I did three gigs. I got gig number four tonight uh, at Kings of Comedy, which is a great night. Oh, I got to go in a bit actually. Um, and I've been, man, I've just leveled up, dude. Like just after after performing for an hour 30 for like 25 nights in a row, I've, I feel like this is my first proper week where I'm getting back into the open mic uh, stand-up circuit scene trying out new gear and doing old stuff i'm so much better just from that experience just from i mean i've I, I got in essentially what is two years of regular gigs in about fucking three four weeks and i just got off stage and i didn't realize how much i've improved until i went back to to normal where where it's not my not my fans don't know who i am not really invested in the show 
but then if I can grab them and get them to go, shit, he's good, like, it's, that's fucking next level for me, so, <clears throat> it's, it's really cool, I feel like I'm getting, getting, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to toot my own horn, actually, I would love to do that, I would fucking love to toot my own horn, alright, now, anyway, what was I saying, sorry, I just wanted to toot my own horn, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was just saying, I, you know what, I was going to say that I feel like I've gotten so much better at comedy, but after that, I think I just put myself back two steps, one step forward, two honks back. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went to this burger joint after a gig, 11, they closed at 11, I got there at like fucking 10.50, just in time. I go up there, and I went, hey man, I want a double meat, double bacon, double cheese, heart attack, fuck the planet, kill animals burger, that's what I want, I want, I want the kind of burger that when I eat it, I start to die a little bit, you know, just that, that burger that, t that shaves a couple of seconds off your total lifespan, like, not a lot, but at least, like, at least a minute 30, you know, like, I'm still gonna die at, like, 81, or, or 82, because I don't drink, but it's gonna be, like, instead of 82, and three minutes, it's going to be 82 and one minute 30. And if I have another burger next week, it'll be 82 exactly. And if I have another one, it'll be like 89, 50, I can't do seconds, 58, 30. Right? Yes. Point is, guys, I wanted a dirty fucking burger that I could eat that it hit for some gains, right? Last thing they make. They make my burger, I see them cleaning up. They're cleaning up everything, they're still making my shit. I get it takeaway because I know they want to close. I get it, they chuck it in my bag. I'm like, sweet, thanks so much. I leave, walking down the street, I'm like, fuck yeah, I got a fucking burger. I'm gonna eat it and die of a heart attack. Oh yeah, a minute 30 less of my life, it's fucking worth it. Right, stoked. Gonna eat the fuck out of this burger. And then I sit down. I find a nice place in the city. It was a nice night. I love the, I love Melbourne City at night. I found a nice place to sit down and eat my burger like a fucking animal in the street. And then I unwrap it. By this time, it's like 11.05. They've closed. Unwrap it. Get my burger. It's big. I'm like, fuck yeah. Take a bite. And I realize... They fucked up and they gave me, accidentally, the vegan burger. And, guys, I feel like I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of YouTube video, I, before, I went through a phase <clears throat> a couple months back, right, where I was like watching, back when I couldn't put down the phone, sometimes I get to the weird part of YouTube where I would look at like videos of, of teenage boys coming out to their their parents on youtube and filming it and getting their reaction and some of the father's l looks of utter bewilderment and disappointment and heartbreak because they were homophobic i feel like even seeing that and how hurtful that was for the son I still feel like I would be way more disappointed than that when I had that burger. You know? Like, just just so much more disappointed than a homophobic dad finding about his gay son sucking dick was when I took a bite into my giant double beef, double bacon, double cheese burger and I found out that there was no beef, no bacon, tofu, and the cheese was fake. Right? Just don't even fucking try, don't give me fake cheese, just fucking don't even try and make a burger, what are you doing, if you're vegan, go for it, there's, I've had vegan food, that's amazing, but I've never, I've never been like, you know what would make this vegan food better, if I replaced all of the vegan ingredients with meat, and, and vegan supplements. Like instead of quinoa, you'd have beef -wa. No! That wouldn't fucking work, would it? Everyone would think that I'm an idiot. But here are all these fucking vegans doing it the other way round. 
And like, oh, you don't, you don't have to have beef. You can have fucking tofu. It's the same thing. You don't need cheese. We could, we've we created this vegan cheese. No, you haven't. You've created yellow garbage. That's what you've made. Yellow rubbish. Put it in the bin. Recycle that shit. And, and I was so fucking hungry that I was like, I guess... I'm eating. And you know what else is like... I paid $18 for it too. I paid $18 and I got this fucking vegan burger. That is... So not only did I get ripped off, because I know that's not... like the, the, the fucking monster heart attack thing that I get. You're paying $18 to die a minute 30 earlier. That's a premium, okay? A lot of people... You know, they spend a lot of money on their suicides. A gun, that's like a grand. Bullets, a couple hundred bucks. Even a noose will run you back at least 30 bucks, you know? So like a burger for $18 for a minute 30 shaved off your life, that's pre- that's pretty good. But it, I understand it's expensive for a burger, but for the value that you're getting in terms of, of dying sooner, it's, it's a bargain. So I, I get this fucking vegan burger, which is only supposed to be $12, and instead, I get charged $18 for it. The cheese is fake. And not only does it taste like shit, instead of killing me faster, it extends my life. And now, I have to live with that memory of me biting into a burger that I thought was going to be amazing and then finding out that it was a vegan one. And I'm going to have to live with that for a minute 30 longer. And that's what sucks. <laughs> that's the real fucking issue. Is I'm going to live longer with that memory of being tricked Although the only good thing about about it is that <laughs> somewhere out there it the opposite happened cuz there's no way that they accidentally made a vegan burger. No, nah, what happened was they made a double beef, double bacon, double cheeseburger and then they got an order for a vegan burger. And they made mine, and they made the vegan guys, and I bit into the vegan burger, and was like, oh, this is pretty gross, but the vegan bit into double beef, double bacon, double cheese, and was like, my life's work is over, and then got sick, because he hasn't had meat in so long. How amazing. (laughs) So somewhere out there, you know? You know, I guess the trade-off is worth it. Not only did I ruin a a vegan's night, I also made them live for a minute 30 less. (laughs) So, hey, you're fucking welcome. All right. What else? What else have we got here? How long are we going for? 32. Oh, fuck. I've been going for a long time. All right. Time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, if you don't know, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the worst part of the podcast, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's guaranteed to give you more cancer than that double beef burger would, right? It's part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in from listeners. So if you have a life advice question, if you have a story that I would find funny, if you've vandalized something or if you've gotten revenge on someone and then gone a little bit too far or, or just gotten the perfect amount of revenge. I love revenge stories. So send them through to podcast at lewspears.com. That's the email, podcast at lewspears.com. Before I get into it, I would like to say uh, a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for keeping this shit running. You guys are the reason why this podcast is coming out, why I have this fucking warehouse, why I can afford to pay editor Keelan uh, to to do all this stuff. And uh, I think you guys are really going to see over the next few months the fucking content machine that that Kiel and I've been working on. Like, I think we're really getting on a roll here. So next week, Tuesday, Lou Review Part 1. Thursday, Lou Review Part 2. And from that week, it's every week, and I'm not going to fucking stop for as long as I can, all right? So uh, consider supporting me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do and all that kind of shit, and it really fucking helps, because at the moment, uh, your boy's running in the red. (laughs) Um, All right. Oh, here's a good one. My friend uses Snapchat to stalk me and my other friends. Help. Hey, cunt. I love your shit. IV was such a good show. I can't wait for next year's tour. My name is Joel. Alrighty, Joel. So, in the last few weeks, thanks for coming to the show, mate. Uh, I've been, uh, last few weeks, I've been hanging out with a group of friends quite often because we don't have school. One of our other friends, who we don't really like heaps, is, keeps, 
who we don't really like, keeps getting upset that we don't invite her places and constantly emotionally abuses us. Oh, no, she doesn't. Abuses you? Fucking cunts are soft today. Why don't you just say she's a cunt? She's emotionally abused. I'm being... I'm being emotionally abused. No, you're not, all right? Okay, she hasn't fucking brought up memories about your dead pets and rubbed them in your face. She's not emotionally abusing you. You just don't like it when she texts you. Although I haven't read the rest of this email, so I could have made a wild judgment, as usual. The reason we don't invite her places is because she's an absolute pain in the ass to organize shit with. Oh, how emotionally abusive is that? The other day, I turned off the snap map feature on Snapchat because fuck that. I don't want to be kidnapped. Yeah, dude, why is that a feature? Why the fuck is showing the hundreds of people that you follow on Snapchat exactly where you live and where you are every moment of every day? Why the fuck is that a feature? Hey guys, we've got a new feature. We're going to tell strangers where you live. Oh, great. Definitely going to sign myself up to Snapchat. Fuck yeah. Dude, speaking of Snapchat, YouTube just in, just introduced YouTube Stories. Another. Luke just sent me a message and just goes, just links me it and goes, great, another fucking thing to post on. Oh, I'm sick of posting. It, uh, you know what? Instagram Stories. Follow me on there. I'm not doing the other things. I mean, I will, but I don't want to. YouTube stories. Fuck. What am I going to do? Open up my... Like what? When I'm hanging out with a bunch of friends, open up my fucking YouTube app and go, just do it a YouTube story, guys. Hey, guys, I'm having fun with my friends. Check me out. And everyone goes, oh, this sucks. Unsubscribed. Fucking... And of all of the problems that YouTube fix, YouTube has, I, I, w- I wouldn't say that not having stories is a problem. It's a fucking benefit at this point. I feel like even fucking Microsoft Word is going to have stories next. I'm just writing an essay. I just, I just, I just read a Wikipedia article and turned it into my own words. I'm a fucking academic. Oh, another thing to post on, man. And of all the problems YouTube has, hey, uh, no one's, uh, no one's getting notifications when I upload a video. I put up a tour vlog and it got, I have, I have almost 200,000 YouTube subscribers and it got 6,000 views and no one got notified about it. Do you, do you want to tell my subscribers when I upload a video because that's what they want? No? You're going to give me Instagram stories instead? Fucking sick. That's what I want. Sorry, Joel. She's a pain. The other day, I turned off the Snap Map feature on Snapchat because fuck that, I don't want to be kidnapped. Good man. Turn that shit off if, if you haven't. Checked if it's on. Turn it off. My friend will call her Sarah uh, because fuck originality. Sarah texts me asking me why I turned off my Snap Map. Dude, that's fucking... What? This is why you should turn it off. This right here. Sarah texts me asking me why I turned off my Snap Map and asked if I was hiding something from her. Fuck! Are you hiding something from me? No, I just don't want you to know where I am 24-7. That's the level, that's the level that these social media fucking companies have got us to where someone else who you don't even like actually feels entitled to know where you are at all times of day and night. That's how connected we are that people think it's the norm and to to the point where they will get offended if they don't know exactly where you are like you've got a fucking tracking device in your dick. Hey Sarah, I'm at the brothel, fuck off. Sarah texts me asking me why I turned off my Snap Map and asked me if I was hiding something from her. I told my other friends about this and they were f- they were fuming. As a group, we don't know what to do about Sarah and we feel like we're too nice to fuck her off. We don't hate her. She's just very, very difficult to be around. Cheers, mate. If this gets on the podcast, I'll happily provide an update. Man. Dude, you just got to... F- some, some people, man. You just have to... You just have to tell them. Like, 
I feel, I don't know, from your email, it doesn't sound like you've tried to, to raise these issues with her and be like, hey, it's annoying when you do this or or it, it it's not nice when you do that or I don't like it when you do this. So maybe you could try doing that, saying like, hey, Sarah, uh, I don't think you should, I don't think you're entitled to know where I am 24-7 and uh, I think it's kind of shit of you to make me feel bad for valuing my privacy as a human. It has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with fucking not showing people where I am 24-7. I don't like that. Like, I've, I've had to do that where some people have been like, oh, oh, you did this because of me. Or you said that in a video and it's about me. How could you do it? I'm like, dude, I don't. Th- I, I have literally had to go on, I don't think about you. I'm sorry that you, that you thought that was about you or I did that because of you, but it's not. I don't think about you. Like some people, like you have to, they think about you so much that that they don't realize that you don't. They think about you so much and so often and so hard that they think, oh, I know they're fucking thinking about me like that too. And you're just living your life completely oblivious. And sometimes when that happens, when people act like that, you you have to tell them in no uncertain terms, hey, I don't mean this to be mean, but I don't think about you. I'm sorry that you think about me, but I don't, I don't, I'm living my life. I'm studying this. I'm trying to be a race car driver. Whatever you got going on, I'm focused on this. I don't focus on you. I don't focus on other people. I'm thinking about me. So stop studying what I do so hard and live your own life. I've done that to people. Um, and sometimes you've got to do it. But uh, this chick, I don't know, man. I would try I would try articulating your issues with her because it sounds like you don't hate her. She's just annoying. I would articulate that and say, hey, I don't like it when you do this. I don't like it when you do that. And every time she does something annoying, just no bullshit and say, hey, when you fucking harass me about hanging out with you, I don't like that because it makes me feel like you're watching me and you're obsessed with me and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Just don't do it in a mean way. Just do it in a, just explain uh, when you do this, I feel this. So don't do that or try and do it like this. And then I won't feel like that. You know what I mean? Like try and st- instead of being like, you're fucking weird or you're annoying, say specifically, when you do this specific action, it makes me feel this specific feeling. And it's not nice. And you could avoid it by stopping that entirely or doing it in this way, which would make me feel much better. You know? Um, and then if that doesn't work, I would say, look, I've raised my concerns with you and uh, I'm really sorry, but I don't, I don't want to be your friend. Um, and I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but I'm, I, I, I think we're too different and I don't want to be your friend. So I don't know. It's, it's like, you know what it is? It's like breaking up with someone and having a relationship. You know, if you think they can work through their issues and it's worth working through it with them, fuck yeah, go for it. But if those issues are so much and they're unwilling to change them and you don't have the time to fucking deal with it and also you're less invested because it is not a relationship, you're not fucking her, just be like, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I'm sorry. And if she thinks you're a dick, hey, that's fine. She's not your friend. So tell her to fuck off. All right. That's, uh, yeah, I'm going to end it there. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Support me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do. I'm going to get both of those loot reviews up nice and early for you. So if you want to catch them before anybody else, and if you want to catch my podcast before it uh, goes live on YouTube and everything uh, publicly, you can support me on Patreon. You get early access to everything that I do, and I get a nice little budget to play around with stuff and uh, afford to pay this fucking massive hole that I'm <laughs> that I'm staying in and working in. And uh, thank you for listening. I will see you next Sunday. And until then, I hope you have a fucking shit one. I'm going to confuse the fuck out of my body with some sushi, some cookies, and half a liter of milk. And then I'm, and then I'm...